Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a trip back in time. Hello, I'm David Vickers and welcome to The Photographic Show. Okay, so maybe not that far back in time. But as of the new year, we are now in 2020, marking the beginning of a new decade. So I thought it'd be a really interesting idea if we took a look back to what was available in 2010 to what is available in 2020. And this should give us some idea of the, what's changed in cameras over the last 10 years. With that in mind, I thought what I'd do is I'd pick a selection of cameras that were available in 2010 and then compare them to their equivalents that are available now in 2020. And that way we can see what's changed over the last 10 years. And it might possibly give us some sort of insight into what's to come in the next 10 years in photography. With the cameras I've chosen, what I've focused on is four main areas. Megapixel count, ISO range, frame rate and video capabilities. Now I've tried to pick cameras across the range to give us a nice set of information so that we can compare them. Starting off, in 2010 I'm going to choose the Nikon D90. Now I know that the D7000 came out in 2010 but it came out right at the end so it wasn't actually possible to shoot with it in 2010. So I've chosen the Nikon D90 as our first choice of camera. So the Nikon D90 had a 12 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Its ISO range was ISO 200 to ISO 3200. Frame rate, the D90 would shoot at four frames per second. And one of the other reasons I chose the D90, it was the first available DSLR that actually shot video. And the D90 shot video at 720p. Now jumping forward 10 years to 2020, the equivalent camera that Nikon has available to the D90 is the D7500. And the D7500 has a 21 megapixel APS-C size sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 51200. The D7500 will shoot at eight frames per second and video is available in 4K. Next camera on my list is the Nikon D300S. This was a replacement for the D300 and the Nikon D300S had a 12 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Its ISO range was ISO 200 to ISO 3200. It would shoot at seven frames per second and offered video at full HD 1080p. Jumping forward 10 years, the equivalent to the D300S is now the Nikon D500 and the Nikon D500 has a 21 megapixel APS-C size sensor an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 51200. The D500 will shoot at 10 frames per second and also offers 4K video. Next on the list in 2010 is the Nikon D700. Now the Nikon D700 had a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, an ISO range of ISO 200 to ISO 6400. The D700 would shoot at five frames per second and it offered full HD 1080p video. Jumping forward 10 years, the equivalent now is the Nikon D750. Now the D750 has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. The D750 has an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 12800. It will shoot at six frames per second and offers video at 1080p. Last on the list of Nikons from 2010 was their flagship camera at the time, which was the Nikon D3S. The D3S had a 12 megapixel full frame sensor an ISO range of ISO 200 to ISO 12800. The D3S would shoot at nine frames per second and offered video at 720p. Jumping ahead 10 years, the Nikon flagship camera now is the Nikon D5. The Nikon D5 has a 21 megapixel full frame sensor. The ISO range is ISO 100 to ISO 102400. The D5 will shoot at 12 frames per second and offers video in 4K. Moving on, let's look at some Canon cameras from 2010 as well. The first camera I've picked from Canon is the 60D. Now the 60D had an 18 megapixel APS-C size sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 6400. The 60D would shoot at five frames per second and offered video at 1080p. Jumping forward 10 years, the equivalent Canon now is the Canon 90D. Now the 90D has a 32.5 megapixel APS-C size sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 25600. The 90D will shoot at 10 frames per second and video is available in 4K. 
Moving on, the next 2010 camera from Canon would be the 5D Mark II. The 5D Mark II had a 21 megapixel full frame sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to 6400. It would shoot at four frames per second and video was available at 1080p. 10 years later, Canon now have the 5D Mark IV. And the 5D Mark IV has a 30 megapixel full frame sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 32000. It will shoot at seven frames per second and video is available in 4K. Our last offering from 2010 from Canon is their flagship model at the time, which was the 1D Mark IV. Now the 1D Mark IV had a 16 megapixel full frame sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 12800. It could shoot at 10 frames per second and video was available at 1080p. Jumping forward 10 years, Canon's current flagship model is the 1DX Mark II. This has a 20 megapixel full frame sensor, an ISO range of ISO 100 to ISO 51200. It will shoot at 14 frames per second and has video in 4K. Now there are plenty of cameras I could have picked over the last 10 years. Now the other one I've added in is Panasonic. And back in 2010, Panasonic had the GH2. The GH2 had a 15 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, an ISO range of ISO 160 to 12,800, and the GH2 would shoot video at 1080p. Jumping forward the 10 years to 2020, Panasonic now offer the GH5. The GH5 is a 20 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, an ISO range of ISO 200 to ISO 25,600, and of course the GH5 shoots 4K. And the other area I thought would be interesting to look at for the last 10 years is smartphones. And because of the wide range of models and types over the last 10 years, I've decided to pick on one and it's just the iPhone. So back in 2010, Apple had the iPhone 3GS. The iPhone 3GS had a three megapixel sensor and could shoot video in VGA quality. Jumping forward to 2020, and we now have the iPhone 11. The iPhone 11 has a 12 megapixel camera and can shoot video in 4K. So in comparing these cameras that are 10 years apart, it looks like the two biggest advancements have been in ISO range, which has given cameras a better low light capability, and the ability to shoot 4K video. Of those two advancements, I'd say that the ISO range is probably the biggest advancement of the lot. It's given cameras the better ability to shoot in low light. The wider ISO range has allowed more options of what you can shoot and what kind of lighting conditions you can actually shoot in. The 4K video has its pros and cons. The massive file sizes that 4K video produces means that people are having to up their storage capabilities to be able to just store the files once they're actually recorded. And then editing 4K video has meant that you probably needed to upgrade your computer to be able to even look at the 4K files, let alone edit them in any software. Another area we need to address from the last 10 years is the rise of the mirrorless camera. I definitely feel this is where the camera market is heading. They're lighter, they're smaller, they're definitely cheaper to produce than DSLRs are. And I think the DSLR is going to be around for a while. It's not dead yet, but I do think the mirrorless market is going to slowly start to overtake the DSLR market that has dominated the last 10 years. With that said, I think the manufacturers like Nikon and Canon will definitely still produce DSLR cameras. There's a huge market out for them. The professional market is still using DSLRs and both companies have massive lens ranges that they need bodies to put onto. So yeah, they're not gonna just throw them in the bin and move all over to mirrorless. So I think the DSLR has still got some life in it yet, but the mirrorless camera will definitely start to catch up in the next 10 years. It'd also be impossible not to mention the smartphone from the last 10 years. The, in 2010, the smartphone kind of heralded the beginning of the selfie revolution. And now in 2020, we've even had a Hollywood movie shot entirely on an iPhone. The growth of social media over the last 10 years, coupled with better internet speeds, has now allowed far more photos to be shared online than ever before. It's worth bringing up that back in 2010, Facebook was only six years old. Twitter was only four years old. YouTube was only three years old. And Instagram only launched at the end of 2010. In 2020, we're going to see both Nikon and Canon release their new top-of-the-line professional DSLR cameras. In Nikon's case, the D6, and in Canon's case, the 1DX Mark III. And the reason that both manufacturers are keen to release their top-of-the-range cameras this year is because it's an Olympic year, and they want sports photographers to be able to showcase their new models at the Olympics. Couple that with the fact that the 2020 Olympics are taking place in Tokyo, and both Nikon and Canon are Japanese companies, 
they're going to want their top of the range cameras available to be used and showcased at their Olympics. So what can we learn from the last 10 years that might give us a clue to what the next 10 years might have to offer? Well, one thing is, is that there seems to be no one sensor format. The APS-C sensor has definitely been the most popular over the last 10 years, but there's been plenty of full frame cameras and plenty of micro four thirds cameras as well. So I don't think any one sensor type is going to dominate over the next 10 years. I think we're going to have a choice of sensor types, a choice of cameras, which allows for all types of photography and all types of budgets. Hopefully over the next 10 years, manufacturers are going to slim down their product lines a bit. There's too many crossovers in the models available, and sometimes that can be confusing for consumers over which camera they should pick. The megapixel race seems to have calmed down over the last 10 years, and it seems to have settled around the 20 to 24 megapixels, being the most popular for most cameras. Now there's always going to be larger megapixel cameras available, but they're always going to be specialist items. The D850 is not for everybody. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic camera, but the huge megapixel count just isn't useful for most people. The Fuji are now producing a camera with over 100 megapixels, but they're always going to be specialist cameras. They're not the kind of camera that every photographer will use every day. One of the things I can see over the next 10 years is the fading out of the JPEG format. The JPEG format is 27 years old and I know it's the industry standard. There are now new file types like HEIF which are allowing better compression and giving better quality than JPEGs do. Once camera manufacturers start incorporating the new file formats into their cameras, the JPEG is going to start to fade away. It will probably always still be an option for a few years, but I can see a new file system coming into photography in the next 10 years. And here's my wildcard prediction for the next 10 years. I can see film photography making a comeback. I think a lot of photographers who grew up and started with digital photography are now interested in seeing if they can go back and shoot in film as well. The price of secondhand film cameras is definitely on the rise and companies like Kodak are starting to reproduce classic film types again. Whichever way you look at it, the last 10 years have shown that photography is alive and well and is more popular than it has ever been. So that concludes our look at the last 10 years in photography. Let me know what you thought of the comparisons and what you thought of my predictions for the next 10 years. Also, what would you like to see? What kind of innovations would you like to see camera manufacturers implement? And what kind of changes do you think will happen in the next 10 years in photography? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. For now, I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.